each week I'll be your tour guide as we explore countries of the world from the comforts of home. And where are we headed this week? To the land of windmills and tulips, where the people and the language are both called Dutch, the Netherlands. Let's go. like we've landed in Rotterdam. It's the only major city in the Netherlands that has modern architecture. It's not the capital, but it's an important city because it's the biggest port in all of Europe. One of the capitals of the Netherlands is this, The Hague. It's the capital where all of the politics and governing takes place. The other capital of the Netherlands is this beautiful city of Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a city built entirely on stilts. Those stilts go down over 30 feet. Why'd they do that? Well, let's look at this picture. This is the Netherlands. You see this yellow section here? <laughs> this used to all be underwater in the North Sea. So what the people of the Netherlands, the Dutch, what they did was they built some strong walls, strong walls, and then they pumped all the water out. They pumped the water out and made this land. It's a pretty smart thing to do. Something else I need to tell you about this map is all of this, oh, it looks like so much is the Netherlands, and it's 16,000 square miles. And that probably sounds really, really big. But it's less than half the size of the state of Maine. Their whole country is less than half the size of our state. It has 12 provinces. This one you see is called Zeeland, and that's where they got the name New Zealand, because the Dutch settled that country. And up here you see North Holland and South Holland. And that's what gets a lot of people confused. People tend to think the country's called Holland. It's actually called the Netherlands. But they're so synonymous that I wouldn't be surprised if any time you looked up where to find something in the Netherlands, it'll actually use the word Holland. The Netherlands is flat, flat, flat which makes it excellent for biking. There are 23 million bikes in the Netherlands and only 17 million people. That's right, more bikes than people. Look at this parking lot. Wow, everyone bikes. People bike to work. They even bike their kids around when they go grocery shopping. The Netherlands is a maritime climate which means it's very mild in the winter and very cool in the summer. And that makes it excellent for farming. The Netherlands is the second biggest exporter of agricultural goods, which is farming goods, things that you grow. They're second in the whole world, only to us in the United States. And remember, they're only half the size of the state of Maine. What agriculture do they export? Let's start with cheese. They've been making cheese since the year 400. Cheeses like Gouda and Edam are Dutch cheeses. They take their cheese very seriously. Look at that. They even have a cheese museum. All that cheese comes from the 17,500 dairy farms in the Netherlands. In comparison, we have 200 dairy farms here in Maine, and they have 17,500 in half that space. Wow, look at this happy, friendly cow, he's so cute. Now, if we want to say hello to him, we actually need to say moo with a B, moo. That's right, 
even the cows speak Dutch. Here's a picture of a board book, and you see down here, it's teaching the little boy or girl the sounds a cow makes, and the sound is boo. Besides dairy products, the Netherlands exports over 800 types of tulip bulbs, 3 billion tulip bulbs a year. So many tulips. They're beautiful. Look at the fields of tulips they're growing. So pretty. Tulips, windmills, and wooden shoes are all symbols of the Netherlands. So let's move on to windmills. Windmills are used to generate power. They date back as far as the year 1100 when they used those windmills to pump out that water to make their land. They also use windmills in farming when they're grinding their wheat to make flour. There are still around a thousand windmills in the Netherlands and most of them still work. So that leaves us with wooden shoes, or as the Dutch call them, klompen. Now that seems to make more sense to me than anything else. Klompen. Because if I was wearing those wooden shoes and I was walking on those bricks, it would be clomping. The oldest surviving pair of wooden shoes dates back to the year 1230, so they've been around a really long time. And for good reason. They keep your feet warm in the winter, cool in the summer. They keep farmers' and fishermen's feet safe from nails and hooks, heavy things landing on them. They keep them dry from the muddy water. There are only 12 people left in all of the Netherlands that still make wooden shoes. They take three or four hours to do this part, the carving, and then they take three weeks to dry. Whew, it's a long time. Farmers still wear them. Hey, that would protect you if a cow stepped on your foot, wouldn't it? <laughs> but mostly, they're just sold in the souvenir shops. The kids used to wear them. Look at those kids. I can see the things of the kids. They're wearing wooden shoes. Can you imagine trying to play tag or hopscotch or climb a tree in wooden shoes? Ah, here are some kids. If I want to say hello to them, it's not too hard. In Dutch, they say hallo. So it's just a little bit different pronunciation than our hello. So I would say hello to these children, and they might have names like Finn or Mila. And if we asked them what's so special about their country, they would probably be very proud to tell us they are ranked the happiest children in the world. I want to hear some more about that. Turns out it's pretty cool to be a kid in the Netherlands. First of all, they start the day with Hagelslag. Hagelslag is a very common breakfast, even the grown-ups eat it. It's toast, with, smeared with butter, and then covered in chocolate jimmies for breakfast. <laughs> I hope it gives them a lot of energy, because something else really cool about the Netherlands is there are so many playgrounds and petting zoos. There's even a rule that 3% of the city land has to be dedicated to playgrounds. The Dutch are also not big on homework. In fact, there's no homework till you're at least 10 years old and very little after that. Look at this cool ride. I would love to be on that. <laughs> Everyone has access to the internet for free and recess is 45 minutes long. Awesome! A special treat that the kids get on December 6th each year, St. Nicholas Day, is a giant chocolate letter. Their initials in giant chocolate. Awesome. Their birthdays are cool too. They say this word. They don't say happy birthday. They say ha felicitiert. Ha felicitiert means congratulations. And they don't just congratulate the kid whose birthday it is. They congratulate mom and dad. 
They congratulate Grandma and Grandpa, brothers and sisters, friends, anyone who's at the party. They walk in and say, Ha felicitir, ha felicitir, ha felicitir. They congratulate everybody. Like our birthday parties, there's cake and presents and games. The game that they like to play most is called Hoopenhafen. This is a game where kids are blindfolded and then spun around and then they try to eat a piece of spice cake dangling from a string. <laughs> Birthdays are so important to the Dutch, they even have something called a birthday calendar. It's marked with the birthdays of all of your family and friends and co-workers, so nobody forgets anybody's birthday. In fact, it's so important they keep it in a very important place. On the refrigerator? No. In a desk drawer? No. Do they keep it locked in a safe? No. They keep it right on the bathroom wall. That's just how important it is to them. They want to see every day whose birthday it might be. Birthdays are so important. They even have the day off for the king's birthday. Everybody in the whole country has the day off. All the shops are closed. It's April 27th now, because that's this man's actual birthday. It's called King's Day. It used to be called Queen's Day when his mom was the queen. To start with, everyone wears orange. It's a symbolic country of the Netherlands because the king comes from the family named after the House of Orange. People gather in the streets and celebrate with music, parades, and fun. Everyone in orange, not kidding here. <laughs> it's also the day of the Vreemart, which is a national yard sale. That means everybody in the whole country has a yard sale. They can put out their things in front of their house or in the city streets. Very, very fun. There's fun stuff for kids to do, and everyone, including the king, plays Kokapen. How about that? Now, that game, Kokapen, is played with a special cake. It's, oh, it's tough to say because, again, this is Dutch, not English. It's Onbikuk. Onbikuk is this special cake that tastes kind of like gingerbread. It's one of the most traditional things you'll find. You'll find it everywhere in the Netherlands. But there's some more food I want to show you. They have this soup called snert. What a cool name, snert. It's a pea soup with sausage. Then there's panakoken. Panakoken, can you guess what that means by the picture and the name? Yep, pancakes. This is called stampot. This is a very traditional dish in every restaurant. Every mom and dad know how to make it. It's mashed potatoes with kale, all stamped, all mashed up, and then some sausage on the side. Oh, these are war fries, or as they call it, patatcha oorlong. That means war fries. War fries is french fries. Okay, so far so good. I love french fries. With mayonnaise, Okay, a lot of countries use mayonnaise instead of ketchup on their french fries. I can get behind that. French fries, mayonnaise, raw onion, peanut satay sauce, and ketchup. Mm, that might give you too many flavors for me. There's this oligolin. Oligolin literally means oil balls. And that is a kind of donut. They just roll the dough and deep fry it. Delicious, just like munchkins. Now, the national snack of the Netherlands is this. <sighs> raw pickled herring, raw onions, and pickles. I guess you develop a taste for it. No, I don't know if I'd try that. Oh, these though, mm, do these look good? Bitterballen. Bitterballen is meat and potatoes all mashed up with gravy. Then they coat it in breadcrumbs and deep fry it. Mm, that does sound pretty yummy. 
And lastly, Stroop waffles. Stroop waffles are two very thin waffle cookies with a layer of caramel pressed in between them. Mmm. Now, I wish I could get one warm on the streets of the Netherlands. That would be delicious. But luckily, here in Maine, I can get them at the grocery store. Stroop waffles. Yum. Oh, that was fun. But now it's time to say goodbye. And if we want to say goodbye, it's a little trickier than the hello. It's tot zins. So, tot zins, Netherlands. It's been a blast.
There is no reason I shouldn't be able to play it too. It's not just for kids. So, you take a piece of that spice cake. Now, how are you going to get a string through it? It's not like a donut or a bagel that already has a hole that you can put a string through. So, what I read was to put a paper clip on the end. You could use a bobby pin too. A paper clip or a bobby pin on the end of a string. This is my first time trying it, so we're going to succeed or fail together. Poke it through the piece of cake. There we go. Now, this cake is supposed to, uh, after you cook it, let it rest for at least 24 hours so it gets nice and firm. Um, we'll see, it hasn't quite been 24 hours, so it might be a little bit gooey still. Oh, it smells so good. Do you like gingerbread at all? Or, um, pumpkin spice muffins, anything like that. If you do, you're going to like this. And see, it hangs. Now, the challenge, of course, anyone could eat this on a plate with a fork. Oh, anyone can do that. What you have to do on your birthday <clears throat> is eat it while it dangles and you're blindfolded. So let's see if I can find someone to set this game up for me. I bet I can. Okay, boys and girls, we've had a few technical difficulties while filming playing this game, which has led to me eating a lot of this cake. <laughs> so Shane promised if it goofed up one more time that he would volunteer to be the player. Guess what? It goofed up one more time. So now Shane has to be blindfolded spun around, and then he has to try to eat a bite of the cake. Let's see if he can do it. All right, are you sure you can't see, young man? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can't see. Okay, now spin yourself around a few times. Now you can attach the string to a clothesline, a fishing pole, a tree branch, whatever it takes to get it dangling in front of the person playing, and they must find it. Oh, it's there. <laughs> Let's see. Tune in to find out. But in the meantime, just remember, in Dutch we say, Tot